Mark Rogers, TV Talk in Tennessee Football with Mike Laval from Last Word on College Football. We get together on a regular basis, uh, call it a Vols Breakdown. You can catch the full conversation on SEC Breakdown on YouTube and the individual topics at Mark Rogers TV. So some coaches would shy away from being, bringing back a ghost from the past who has exceeded uh, their accomplishments to date. Philip Fulmer with a national championship and a long list of top 10, top 15 finishes at Tennessee has been brought back as a special advisor. And actually in taking that position at the news conference, um, went uh, to a bit of a defense mode for Butch Jones in, in conveying um, the situation that he inherited as being uh, an utter mess uh, of sorts. So your thoughts about uh, Philip Fulmer, um, and, and this position, what it could mean in terms of perception and cachet, but also the nuts and bolts of what it could mean in terms of tangible uh, results. Well, I, I think it's a good move. Uh, it, it, first of all, it definitely makes the fan base happy. Phil Former is a guy who's ingrained at Knoxville. He, he's, you know, he's as Tennessee as any guy there. Even after coaching, he explored a couple opportunities, but he's been in Knoxville ever since he left a coach. And, and let's face it, he's not going to leave. That's, that's his home. That's where he's going to be. And the fans love him. Uh, so it's a great move uh, by the UT system president Joe DiPietro. Uh, well, I don't think this is. I don't think it has as much of a negative uh, impact as a lot of people think it might. I don't think there's a lot of implications here. I think what Fulmer is going to be doing for DiPietro and the UT system is really community relations, uh, really working with the boosters, trying to rebuild. Uh, rebuild that trust between the athletic department and the and the uh, university system and its constituents in Tennessee. Fulmer knows a lot of people. Like I said, he's been in Knoxville uh, since he came back and was the assistant coach with majors, and people around there love him. Uh, you, know, you know, it's kind of awkward. Uh, he, you know, the the current athletic director just beat Fulmer out for the AD job. Of course, it's always awkward. You can ask Ber uh, Brett Bielema in Arkansas how awkward it is to have a former legendary coach as the athletic director, uh, or in this case, a special advisor over you. You know, he had Barry Alvarez there at Wisconsin. Uh, when you have a guy like that who has national championships or a national championship win looking over your shoulder, that can be a little bit stressful. But I think DiPietro made a good move uh, bringing him back as an advisor, special advisor. I don't think it's going to create as much friction in in the athletic department as people think. Um, you know, I think, like I said, I think Fulmer's going to rebuild those bridges. Uh, the, after the departure of Fulmer, when they brought Kiffin in and then Dooley, that was really the first time uh, in in really 30 years, 40 years at Tennessee, uh, 40 years that Tennessee really looked outside of the Tennessee family for a coach. Even the coaches they had before that with uh, with Bill Battle and those guys had some Tennessee ties before they brought him in. Lane Kiffin was a, uh, a significant departure. is really the first guy that Tennessee ever brought in that really had no ties, pre-existing ties to the university. Uh, so I think that really, uh, ever since that hire with, with Mike Hamilton as the athletic director, uh, with the Kiffin hire, then the Dooley hire, then some basket, some questionable basketball moves by Hamilton with those hires. Uh, you know, the, the kind of the trust between the system and the athletic department, the fans and the boosters uh, and the trustees of the system has kind of been degraded. Bringing Fulmer back in the fold, we're starting to see, I think Butch Jones was a quality hire. He might not work out at Tennessee. A lot of fans are happy, but he did rebuild the program. Uh, you look at the new uh, baseball hire, tremendous potential there. Curry was a hire, the athletic director that a lot of people were concerned about, but but so far in the first four months has made a lot of good decisions, uh, made a lot of things that made the fans happy. So we're starting to see after after a decade of some really questionable and really poor and bad decisions uh, from the senior leadership at Tennessee, Tennessee fans are kind of happy now. Over the last couple of months, they've seen a couple really positive Good hires, good decisions, good changes. Uh, while while they're still disappointed after last year's football season, there seems to be some common sense and some good, thoughtful decisions being made at the higher echelons in Knoxville now. This just reinforces that. Uh, if the football team can get some momentum and maybe surprise some people this year, uh, you know, nine wins, uh, you know, maybe you know if they get really lucky and get 10 wins, uh, you could see some momentum building in the athletic department moving forward. Uh, but Tennessee fans are not happy with the overall athletic department, not just football. Uh, football is actually one of the better teams right now. The baseball team has been disappointing. Of course, Rick Barnes, uh, we think, has the basketball team on the trajectory. The Lady Vols have been disappointing a little bit lately. Uh, and then the other programs, maybe for the exception of, of men's track, uh, have been a little bit disappointing. So, 
So this is just another step and just, you know, this is more, I think this is much more about the athletic department as a whole than the football team. So I think it's a, I think it's a win-win situation. I think it's a win for the fans. Obviously it's a win for Fulmer. I think it's a win uh, for the administration as well. I don't think it's really as threatening to Butch Jones uh, as people might think. Fulmer has said on multiple occasions that he supports Jones and that Jones has done a good job. It won't be up to Fulmer to fire him. Uh, you know, that, that'll be a decision uh, by Davenport and, and Curry. So, Mike, uh, coaches are typically fired after failing to meet expectations either for a particular season or a string of seasons. Uh, it's kind of an odd scenario in which Tennessee has had high expectations and the national uh, perception has been that the team was ready to win uh, the last two seasons, but not so much this season. So the expectations have dropped, at least for the particular team that's going to hit the field this fall. So if Butch Jones throws in a 7-5 and five season as expected, uh, one thought process could be, well, that's what was expected. The other thought process could be, expectations need to be much higher at Tennessee, and he's missed his window, and it just has that feel that he's he's headed down uh, that trajectory on the downside. Yeah, I've said this multiple times, and I've written some articles about it on Last Word on CollegeFootball.com. The, the thing about Butch Jones is uh, it, the way you judge him depends on how you look at him. If you're a Volunteers fan who looks at how far we've come, Generally, you appreciate Butch Jones and you like him and you want him to stay. He had, there's no doubt, nobody can argue that he has rebuilt the program from really its worst decade in the history of the program. No doubt. You, you cannot argue that he's rebuilt the program. However, if you're looking at it from the perspective of where you want the program to be, then you're generally very disappointed with Jones and you'd like to see him go. Tennessee fans, you know, I, I, and this, you know, this is maybe the Tennessee fan coming out in me, uh, but but I think Tennessee is an underrated program nationally. Top 10 all-time wins. I think top five bowl wins, top five bowl appearances, uh, top 10 in wins. I think in every decade except for the for the uh, 2000, for this decade, I believe, uh, of all programs. So I, 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 it's, it's hard to argue that Tennessee isn't a top 10 historic program, top 10 national historic program. So a lot of all fans want to be that program. Uh, so if you look at it from the perspective of where he's brought us, you're generally happy. If you're looking at a perspective of where you think we should be, which is uh, competitive in the East, winning East championships uh, two out of every three or two out of every four years, you're generally disappointed in Jones. Uh, so so it really depends on if you're looking at it from where he's where we where we were and how he's brought us there, or where we want to be and how he hasn't gotten us there. So of all nation, I think is is fairly split on Butch Jones. A seven win season would add a tremendous uh, amount of stress. I think that seven wins is kind of the 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 uh, the worst possible solution. Six and below, I think you know he he's um, very shaky ground. Eight and above, I think he's pretty secure. It's that seven win season where you think, when you, do we do we keep him? Do we let him go? What's our what's our best alternative if we do let him go? Uh, so it's going to be interesting. But but I I kind of think that's what I, I think I think that's the situation that Jones is in right now, heading into the season. Balls breakdown comes your way on the SEC Breakdown channel on YouTube each and every. Uh, week or as often as we can possibly get together as we uh, get you geared up for 2017. Mike LaVall from Last Word on College Football.